All right, so recently there was the 2023 Amy 1, precisely last Tuesday, I believe. Uh, and I wanted to get a chance to try to film some of these. During the week, I'm often working from like 3 p.m. to 10 or 11. And by the time I get done with that, you're just exhausted and it's not possible to film something quality at that time of night. Um, so Sundays I have off, I have a little bit more time today. I sometimes have off, most of the time have off. And I'm able to actually film and things like that because I have the energy to do so. So that's what's going on here. I did get a chance to look at these problems finally and solve a few of them. We're gonna go through a few right now. I'll try to get done as many as I can tonight. Uh, let's get started. 2023 Amy 1 Problem 1. Five men and nine women stand equally spaced around a circle in random order. The probability that every man, so how many people? 14 people. Okay, we got 14. The probability that every man stands diametrically opposite a woman is M over N, where M and N are relatively prime positive integers. So again, relatively prime means that they don't have any common divisors other than one. It has nothing to do with they themselves being prime. Uh, so based on that, let's see, what can we think of here? I, if I'm not sure, right, how to start a problem, I'll probably just kind of draw a circle and kind of reason, right? If there's going to be 14 people, then it makes sense that there'll be seven groups of people who are across from each other. And we recently had a problem on the AMC that dealt with cross pairs. And so this seems kind of maybe in the same vein as that. So uh, let's look, make a circle, I guess. And then we'll just kind of label. If, if it's going to go this way, there's going to be seven cross pairs. Then we'll probably count to seven before we get uh, all first seven should come here. And the eighth one should be directly across. Um, that way, that's the start of the, the second half. And you can kind of just go around. Let me just kind of do it, block in the camera for a second. Uh, 2, 9, 3, 10, 4, 11, 5, 12, 6, 13, 7, 14. Something like that, okay? And so you've got seven different cross pairs that you could make. And how do we want to begin this? Does order matter? Does order not matter? And the main thing on the Amy is, you know, you've got a lot of time, right? Even if you took all three hours, you'd have an average of 12 minutes per problem, 12 times 15 being 180. Most people aren't going to answer all 15. So that means you've got at least 12 minutes for every problem. So you shouldn't really rush yourself too much. You want to work efficiently once you have a plan. But there's no reason to like panic with time and things like that. So uh, five men, nine women. So how are we going to do this then? Let's say we only really care about if the men are standing diametrically opposite a woman. Why don't we just place the men then? If we place the men and none of them are across from each other, every other spot would be a woman and they would be diametrically opposite a woman. So based on that, why don't, there's another concept within probability that we use a lot and that's fixed position, what I call it. You're going to fix one of the people. So I'm going to take this number one spot here and we're going to say that that is one of the men. It's man one now, man one out of, uh, there'll be man two, three, four, and five. And now we can kind of think, all right, there's 13 other spots. Let's say we did order matters. This is actually one of the problems where you can do it either way. You can say order matters, you can say it doesn't matter, and you can get it correct as long as you execute both strategies. In fact, because you have that 12 minutes, maybe you should try both ways and see if you can get it a different way. Because if you get two different ways to get the same exact answer, you'll feel a lot more confident in that answer. So let's see what we can do here. If we take the order mattering of the other four men, then our denominator would be 13. You have 13 choices for the second man, 12 choices for the third, and then 11, and then 10, right? And this, this is order matters implicitly, even if you're not using the permutations, right? I mean, in fact, if you did permutations of 13 P4, we want to arrange four of them, you're going to get this anyway, because you're going to get 13 factorial over the difference factorial, which is nine, and you're going to be left with this. Um, 
So then, uh, yeah, let's keep going from there. So now that's the total ways the men could sit down in the remaining seats. Why do we do the fixed position, by the way? Eh, it's just kind of maybe an easier way to not have to worry about rotations and all that kind of stuff. If you fix this man one in one of the positions, it doesn't really matter which one, then once he's fixed, everyone else sits based on him. There is one person to his left, two, uh, person two to his left, three to his left, one to his right. Everybody's position is now fixed and you don't have to worry about like the n minus one factorial stuff and all that if, if that's a concern, circular permutations, if you will. So uh, keep going then. Now we're gonna say how many of these ways are a benefit? Well, initially, where can the second man not sit down? They can't sit here in seat number eight. That would be across from man one, and that would prevent every man to stand diametrically opposite a woman. So that means you couldn't go here. You'd have 12 other seats, pick one of them. Okay. Now the next man is going to sit down and w where is the, this man sitting down though? Randomly give him a seat so you can think about it, right? Let's say that he sat right here. Okay, so if he's sitting right there, then obviously the new person cannot select four. And they've, they lost access to one and eight and 11. So every time a man sits down, the next person has two less seats that they can sit in because they're gonna lose the seat this person just sat in and the seat across from them. So it makes sense that you would get 12 times 10 times eight times six. And you can just kind of go ahead and verify that after you have 11 sit down, now there's four missing seats out of the 14. Um, and so that would be 10 people, right? And then after that, you choose that, let's say that person sits down, right? You've got man one has sat down, man two has sat down. You have another man sit here, there's man three has sat down. Guess what? Six cannot be used. You just lost two seats. So when the next person chooses, he only has eight places to sit. Make sense? So uh, this is saying the order matters though. We're saying the order that they're arranged in makes a difference. Let's go ahead and calculate uh, 12 and 12, 10 and 10, 48 over 143. Okay, uh, this doesn't simplify. These are both prime and neither one has it there. Uh, you should know the 11's trick for multiplying. Uh, Two-digit numbers, basically, everybody taking the Amy probably knows it, but yeah. Uh, you add the two digits and drop that in the middle for quick calculation. Um, if it goes over like 11 times, I don't know, 84, when you drop the 2, because 8 plus 4 equals 12, when you drop the 2 from the 1's place in the middle, the 1 from the 10's place will bump up. So you would get 9, 2, 4. Yeah, okay, so uh, let's keep going though. Uh, I like to just point out those little tricks as we go. Okay. Now, we also said there should be a way to do it where order doesn't matter. Okay, let's try to think about what that might look like then. If we did order doesn't matter, then we would say what? Have man one sit down, okay? Still have that, still have the fixed position. But when the next person sits down, there's now 13 other seats. So that means that they could sit in 13 choose four seats. The order not mattering of, you know, what, just M's, right? Just placing M's. So 13 choose four to sit down. Then how would we count the numerator? How are we gonna come up with that? I think it's best to go with the cross pairs example again. So after this man one sits down, we block off the seat over here. Again, you're finding favorable outcomes because probability is favorable over possible. Favorable outcomes over possible outcomes. So then we're just gonna say there's six other cross pairs. Of those six cross pairs, I'm going to need to choose four of them because there's four more men that have to sit down. And once a man sits down, that cross pair is taken. We're designing favorable. We don't have to worry about, but what if they sat in the wrong seat? That's the point. We're picking only the favorable outcomes where they don't sit across from each other, right? So don't worry about that. But there is an aspect still that we have to account for. Number one, if, if the, uh, that's the, the second man sat here, right? And then over here would be a woman, but they could switch. You're choosing a cross pair in which of the two seats that are across from each other does the man sit in? That's two choices. 
and you've got four men each making two choices, you're going to have two to the fourth power. Let's calculate this as well and see how it comes out. So um, we already know what uh, 13 choose four. We're going to have 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times the nine factorials canceling. And I'm just going to keep it as four factorial for now. The numerator, six choose four is just like six choose two. It's six times five over two. Um, again, I'm using a shortcut utility. N choose two is N times N minus one over two. So six times five over two would be 15. And you're going to have uh, five times three times two to the fourth. Okay. Uh, so then what? Um, Let's go ahead and take this denominator here. Again, a quick trick, if you've got a fraction in your denominator but not your numerator, just grab the C and it's gonna go up here, right? Because you're gonna be divided by a fraction is times the reciprocal, that's how it's gonna end up. So just snag this and put it up here and I'm gonna take away that arrow because it's gonna block my calculation. I'm just gonna erase this and move it to the numerator. So four factorial, I'm gonna write that as four times three times two. Now I'm gonna cancel stuff, five and two with 10, four and three with 12. What do I have left? Three times 16, 48, 13 times 11, 143. What's left? Find M plus N, add those, get 191, confirmed in two different ways. And did order matter or did it not matter? In this problem, it doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and get to problem two.